better time than right now. Amen, 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 amen. You reign in glory. You reign in majesty. Oh, thankful for that. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we are thankful for another wonderful opportunity to be here at Word of Promise Ministries. We thank God for the opportunity for us being able to come together and speak and receive at the same time, the wonderful truth of what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for us through his death, burial, yes. and resurrection. And again, as yes. I said on many occasions, that's the purpose, again, that, that God gave me the title of the, even this ministry, Word of Promise. The same promise that yes. God said that we receive that uh, affects us, that we, uh, again, allow to work in our hearts, to renew our mind, to change us to again cause us to see God differently, see others differently, and to live differently. That same promise that we receive, we are called to go and take the word of that promise mm -hmm. out to others, that others may receive it as well, and see again God's work in their lives through that as well. And so uh, before I get into again where we are, I did want to say that today is a day that people celebrate uh, our mothers, the mothers, those that have given birth to us, those that, again, allowed us uh, and were vessels for us to enter into this world uh, are, are our mothers. And so we as fathers, we as husbands, we as uh, sons, we as brothers, we honor all of the mothers out there and we thank God for every last one of them and uh, thankful for what, how God has used them, again, to increase this earth so that those again can uh, uh, more and more individuals can come and walk in the truth of what Jesus Christ has done we are thankful for again how God has used uh, so many mothers to raise up uh, um, uh, the little ones and uh, especially those that have, have raised them up in the Lord in the truth those that have been used to bless uh, um, um, their children by pushing them and pointing them toward Jesus Christ. We are thankful for all of those mothers. And so uh, with that being said, what we are talking about um, uh, or have been talking about as of late is this series on faith. We've been talking about faith for some time now again. And as I've said on many occasions with us being called Word of Promise Ministries and us uh, are called to take the word of God's promise out to others. So that others may receive that promise and walk in and how we have received that promise and how others are called to receive that promise is by faith is by faith and so faith again has been shown in many many occasions throughout scripture and that we've gone through as well and shown and have shown that faith uh, again it's great importance uh, again with with that being the case we've talked about again uh, what is faith? We've talked about what faith is and how the aspect of, of, of what faith is. And it is, again, as it says in Hebrews 11, it is the substance of things hoped for. It is this concrete foundational dependence uh, on God for what he has provided for us in Jesus Christ, although these things are unseen. They are unseen when it comes to God's righteousness, God's power, God's life. We cannot see or even fathom again how these things are going to uh, um, be received by us. Uh, but again, God says in trusting me uh, again, those things will work in our hearts and lives. And God is saying, just believe me in me. Have this substance in your heart where you depend upon me for what it is I have provided in Jesus Christ. And so we've talked about, again, what is faith? We've talked about the importance of faith. We've talked about the work of faith, uh, being the fact that there are three different aspects uh, of works that are related to faith. We've talked about the works that people attempt to do that, again, are against faith and that they, again, reflect that a person, again, is attempting to gain 
what God says you only receive by faith. We talked about uh, the, the work of faith, which is the response, uh, again, of mankind. When they believe something, there's going to be a corresponding action or response that reflects that belief. And we've talked about the good works that God says are going to be a byproduct of that faith. As a person lives by faith in Jesus Christ, God's power and grace is going to work in our lives and in order to lead us to good works. And we talked about in this last portion of the series how, again, this faith, again, develops into knowledge as wisdom and revelation is poured into our hearts, into a heart that trusts in Christ. That as we trust in Christ and we have revelation of who Christ is poured into that heart and wisdom poured into that heart, it starts to develop as knowledge. That faith starts to develop as knowledge or it causes us to see differently. See again how God sees himself, how God sees us, how God sees situations. We start to now have our minds renewed to begin to see that way. And then as that happens, as we have that knowledge start to be developed in us, we talked about the fact that God's power and life or his desire, his emotions, his feelings start to form in us as we begin to have that knowledge, as we begin to see as God sees, as that happens, God's power and life begin to form in us. And then as that God power and that God life is formed in us, it compels us into actions that align with God's will. And that's what, again, we've talked about um, in the aspect of how starting with faith, starting with simply the planning of the good news of what Jesus Christ has done through his death, burial, and resurrection, having that planted into our hearts, and then now in a heart that trusts in Jesus Christ for what that good news says, now we have more revelation of who Christ is and more revelation of the wisdom of God, the purpose and intent in which he did what he did. As that happens, it renews our minds and causes again God's desire to work in us and lead us and compel us toward that which God has called us to. And so we've shown again that process of faith and the importance of faith. And there's another aspect of something that we oftentimes see in scriptures that is very closely connected with faith. And that is love, mm -hmm. love. And so what we're gonna talk about today is faith and love and their connection. There's a direct connection with faith and love. And if we look at numerous scriptures, we'll see oftentimes where you see love, faith is oftentimes there somewhere. And look at how Paul oftentimes started off his uh, uh, um, letters to the people. Look what he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. He says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, look what he says, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abound towards each other. Faith and love. Look at what he says in Philemon uh, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. He says again at the beginning of this book, he says, I thank my God making mention of you in my prayers, mention of you always in my prayers. Look what he says, hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and toward all the saints. Again, he shows this connection with, he continues with this faith and love connection that he sees and hears of. In Ephesians chapter one, one of our scriptures we've used on numerous occasions, he says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Again, faith, love. Look what he says over here in Colossians chapter one, verse three and four. All of these are at the beginning of his uh, uh, presentation to these individuals. He says in verse three, we give thanks to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you. Look what he says. Since we heard 
of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. Faith, love. Look what he says in 1 Thessalonians. There's so many different places. I just want to show as many as possible. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Look what he continues to connect together with these individuals, your faith and your love. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. And so he shows here that again, the three most important things that are to take place right now is faith, hope, and love. So those two aspects of what we're going to talk about today our faith and love. We continue to see that there is this connection between our faith and love, that they are almost intertwined together. And that's what we're going to attempt to show uh, today is that they are truly intertwined. Now let's look at God's love over here and look at love. Look what it says over here in John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, and many of us know this scripture, for God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave his only begotten son. Why? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the thing I want us to notice here, look at what it said that God did. God so loved the world that he did something. He did something. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son. So again, God's expression of love to the world was what? Him giving his son, giving his only begotten son. And then it goes on to say, why? That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So here is the world's response or what should the world response be to that that presentation of God's love to them they to believe in the one whom God sent which was Jesus Christ and this is what my point is here that I want to bring out uh, is that God's expression of love is Jesus Christ and so when people believe in Jesus Christ what are they believing in they're believing in God's love towards them the connection of faith and love Faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in Jesus, is trusting in God's love for us. In, in us trusting in God and what he sent Jesus Christ to do, since Jesus was a presentation of God's love towards us, us receiving that love, us trusting in that love, is us trusting in Jesus Christ. See, we can talk about love and what people want to make love, but God says what my love is, is in what I did in sending my son and him dying for your sins and him paying the price for your sins and him being raised from the dead to become your everything. As you trust in that, he says, you're trusting in my love. That is, again, that initial aspect of faith and love and its connection. It is as we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're trusting in God's expression of love towards us. It goes on to say that over here in Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 5. It says, now hope does not disappoint. He says, why? Because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So he says here, the Holy Spirit is, is pouring the love of God into our hearts. He says in verse 6, so he's going to tell us again what that, what that love of God is that he's pouring into our hearts. In verse 6 he says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. He says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. And so again, it shows here that God's presentation of love towards us was the fact that God sent Jesus to die for mankind when mankind could offer him nothing. And, and he's saying the response from mankind is to believe in the love that he has towards us. By how? By believing in Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ and what he sent him to do and to accomplish is all God's love towards us. And the connection with faith and love in this aspect is that as we believe in Jesus Christ, and in what he's done and in what he's accomplished and in what he's provided with believing in God's love towards us. Go ahead, you yes, got something? Um, the thing that gets me is God shows his love towards us uh -huh. while he gave his son. Uh -huh. uh, but a lot of us is not reciprocated. Oh man, that's... Whew. Or what have you. We don't, you know, because in God's love, we should not only think of it being passive. Oh, come because, on. Because, uh, like I said, while we was yet sinners, yes, it yes. wasn't a thing that we did right. Yeah, yeah. Because in this side, we belong. That's exactly right. And so, therefore, in that love, we have to recognize and receiving it to, be, to accept it that we've given up our own. My goodness. Uh, um, and that's where. I see a lot of us so-called Christendom mm. fail, mm. Mm. or what have you. You know, we uh, 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 we receive and believe on him, but there's a lot of things in our life mm. is not good in this sight. Mm. Mm. Once we receive him, he'll, he'll come into us and get rid of those things that that pleases oh, him. Oh, see, you skipping ahead, you skipping ahead, <laughs> you skip, you going, to, but that is. That is true. I'll just say that for now. That is so true. And uh, we're going to get get to that aspect of it. And uh, But that is so, so true what you're saying there again. But the first initial aspect of God's love, again, is that it has to be his love towards us. Again, just like he said, while we were yet sinners, while we were ungodly, while we were still without strength, he, he expressed his love towards us. And then, again, through Jesus Christ. And we are called to believe in that love that God has towards us. And this is what it says also over here in 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 9, uh, where it says, In this the love of God was manifest toward us. He said that God has sent his only begotten son into the world. This is the reason why. And see, this is important. This goes back to what you were saying, that we might live through him. Yes. It, like you said, it's not a passive yes. thing. Exactly. His love towards us is for the purpose of us now living through him. It's to live our lives through him and on the basis of what he's provided now in Jesus Christ. Let's keep going. See, I'm skipping. You still got to skip it ahead. Uh -huh. We're going to get to that though. And so again, but it says in this, verse 9 again, in this, the love of God was manifest towards us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. He says, in this is love. Not that we loved God. Mm -hmm. He said, but that he loved yes. us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That is the initial mm -hmm. aspect of God's love. Is that he loved us while we were yet without strength, mm -hmm. while we were ungodly, mm -hmm. while we could not provide to him anything. He loved us and again sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the atoning sacrifice. The one again who could pay for all of the wrong that we had done so that we could have right relationship with God. And faith, the connection of faith is as we trust in what it is. That Jesus Christ has done and provided we are actually believing in God's love for us and again that's so important because a lot of people can have a false sense of what love is yes and it has to be yes. pinpointed that this is what God's mm -hmm. love is is I have sent Jesus Christ 
to provide something for you, to make available for you something that you can't provide for yourself, that you can't work up yourself. You can't gain right relationship with God no matter how hard you try in and of yourself. And so I, through my love, God is saying, have provided for you again this right standing with me in sending my son to again pay for all of your sins so that you can have this right relationship with me. And I said this here, and not only that, but everything that Jesus Christ has provided for us in, in him dying, being buried and resurrected, all that he has provided is what God is manifesting his love through. And that's why I said this, I said God's love towards us is manifest through his grace, his power, through right standing, through forgiveness, through peace, through life, through knowledge, through righteousness, and through holiness that are all provided through Jesus Christ. See, every last one of these things, God's power, right standing with him, God's unmerited favor, his forgiveness, his peace, his life, his knowledge, his is. Uh, righteousness, when I talk about life, that's that joy, that's that kindness, that's that, again, self-control, all of these different things that, that are provided for us in Jesus Christ are all an expression of God's love towards us. And again, and I said all of these things and much more that I mentioned right here are expressions of God's love towards us that we receive and walk in when we live by faith in Jesus Christ. That that again is so, so important that all that Jesus Christ has provided for us and made available for us through his death, but not just his death, his burial and his resurrection, him being a resurrected savior that is attempting to provide so much in our lives and have worked so much in our lives are all an expression of God's love towards us. And again, as we live by faith in what Jesus Christ has provided, we are believing in God's love for us. That that is a direct connection of faith and love. That that's what ultimately faith is. It is trusting in God's love towards us through Jesus Christ. Through what he sent Jesus Christ to accomplish and provide. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop where we just believe in God's love towards us. That is the foundation and it is necessary because none of the rest will work if that's not there. If any of that is off kilter, none of the rest of the stuff is gonna work. I have to believe in God's love toward me that he expressed and provided so much in Jesus Christ. Because if I don't, I'll be off kilter. But again, as I said before, there's much more. And I want to talk about that much more. Look what he says over here. Again, what we just read over in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 9. We said what? That in this, the love of God was manifested toward us. He said that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. He says in verse 10, in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us mm -hmm. and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. But let's keep reading. Look at what it says in verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Mm -hmm. And that's the part he's saying. He's saying, if God so loved us, so if we believe in the love that God has for us, what's also now gonna start to come out of us? Love towards others. Mm -hmm. Love towards others. And that's why when we read all of these scriptures that we read before, when we said that in those beginning of scriptures that Paul was, was writing or beginning of letters that he was writing to these individuals, he would always include faith and love. Well, not always, but he would oftentimes include faith and love. But look at where the love was pointed to. Look what he says again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and, and verse 3. He says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, 
as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. So your faith is where? In Jesus Christ. It is in the love that God has taught you. But look what he says. I, I, I hear that because of your faith grows exceed, exceedingly and the love of every one of you abounds towards each other. See, that's the other aspect of it that he's saying. This love is abounding towards one another, towards each other. He says again in Philemon uh, chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, he says the same thing. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have what? Toward the Lord Jesus Christ, faith toward the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, and even love toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all the saints. The love is toward all the saints. Again, and even in Ephesians chapter one, verse 15, where he says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and also your love for all the saints. Again, so he continued to show here that this faith is what? In Jesus Christ, who is an expression of God's love, God's love towards us. But that love is toward the saints, toward yes. others. And again, and going back over here to this first John scripture in verse 11, where he says, Beloved, if God so loved us, if we believe in the love that God has towards us, then what is going to come out of us is going to be love towards our brothers mm -hmm. and our sisters and again so he not only shows that faith again is in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the love that God expressed towards us but he also shows us that through that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who is an expression of love towards us that love now is going to come out of us toward others toward others again it's like a complete circle you have faith in the lord jesus christ again and then that faith that's in the lord jesus christ leads to love towards others that faith again and love is directly connected that we are called to have faith in the lord jesus christ and at the same time who is an expression of god's love and then at the same time god's love uh, um, uh, that would be love towards others and that's why again he even says this over here in Galatians chapter 4 excuse me chapter 5 verse 4 and 6 look what he says you have become estranged from Christ you who attempt to be justified by law you have fallen from grace and again so he was talking to these individuals who had picked up law, who, who again, who were allowing people to present to them law. And he was saying, you're time, attempting to be right by that instead of right by God's expression of love right. towards you, who is what? Jesus. Instead of that, you're trying to be right by law. You're trying to be right with God by getting that together, fix that, get that right, be right by that. You were trying that instead of, no, I'm right with God because he loved me so much mm -hmm. and sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And I trust in him for what it is that he has provided. And so he goes on to say, you have fallen from grace when you attempt to be justified by law. And then he says in verse five, he says, for we, he says, this is what we do. For we, through the spirit, eagerly wait. For the hope of righteousness by faith. And then this is it in verse 6. He says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. It's profitable at all. But what is profitable, uh, Paul? But faith working through love. Mm -hmm. So there is a faith that is working through love that he says here that mankind that we who are saved are to operate by. And again, in verse five, he says that as we do that, in verse five, he says, for we through the spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Instead of us trying to live by law, we again allow love to shape our faith and our faith in God's love for us to allow the spirit of God to lead us toward righteousness versus law. And but then what, look at what he goes on. To say in verse 13 just to skip down a little bit 
He says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. You're free. You're free from the law. You're free from trying to live by the law. He says, only don't use your liberty as an opportunity to flesh. Uh, to the flesh. Meaning, don't, don't sit there and say, okay, because I, I don't have to live by the law of uh, do not commit adultery. Hey, it's, it, I can go on and do it. See, that's using that liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But he says, this is what, again, I'm called to do. He says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only don't use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but this is what you do through love serve yes. one another that's what you use that liberty for that yes. freedom from the law because when you live in this liberty that's when the spirit of god can manifest the righteousness and that love towards others that's when he can do that when again you live by faith in god's love for you which is jesus christ again he says for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. He says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. And oftentimes we confuse this to think he means you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. No, he's really talking about as you have been loved by God, you love your neighbor the same way. That's, his, that's what he, he's saying. He's saying as you have now trusted in God's love for you, which is expressed through Jesus Christ, providing for you freely everything that again, that God is wanting you to have, you now operate with your brother. In the same way, your brother and your sister. Go ahead, sir. Right. So more, more likely, the Lord is saying, you are my hand extended mm. now. Mm. 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 Since, you, since you receive me, it's no longer you but me in you. Absolutely. And, I, and that's basically his attribute. Mm -hmm. he, or what have you. Uh, you know, even exactly. that his word said, blessed are those that give. That yeah. those who receive. That's exactly right. Oh, wow. absolutely. absolutely. Because that's God's attribute. It is. And and this is the thing. And I don't know. Um, I'm mean, skipping just a little bit. But I got to go on and say it. Because you, 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 you're you saying exactly it. Again, as you trust in God's love towards you. Which is what? Jesus Christ. Him and everything he's provided. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. Everything that he's providing, you're receiving. And yeah. now, but everything that you're receiving, God is saying, I want to come out of that's you right. towards others. And, that's and, right. and that's why I mentioned earlier what God is giving to us freely in Jesus Christ is his power, yes. his grace, his yes. life, his love, right. his patience, that's his right. kindness, his forgiveness. All of that is what God is saying in my love I have given to you. Well, if that is the case, I have received that. What's going to happen? It's going to come out of me towards that's others. That's right. It's good. That's that's why those are directly connected. Yes. Again, I can't say I have faith in God's love for me again mm -hmm. uh, unless that love is expressed uh, through exactly. what Jesus Christ has made available, and then it's gonna come out of me. Uh, exactly. It's gonna manifest out of me, and, and he says that a little bit later. I'm skipping though mm -hmm. ahead, but again, that is so important. Mm -hmm. Again, as I have been loved uh -huh. by God. In him sending Jesus Christ to provide for me everything that he's made available. Well, everything that he's made available as it is working in me, it's going to manifest itself out as love towards others. Just like God's love towards me. And again, going back to this or looking at this even more when he talks about loving others. Look what he says. He says in verse 8 of Romans chapter 13. Verse 8 through 10. He says, Owe no one anything yes. except to love one yes, another. Right. He says, For he who loves has for, uh, another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not cut, uh, steal, uh -huh. you shall not bear false witness, you shall uh -huh. not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this same namely. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Right. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. 
And again, he shows that this is again the reason why we can be disconnected from the law without having to worry about folks saying, oh yeah, because you ain't on the law now, you just think you can just do whatever. No, God says, as you trust in me yes. and my love yes. for you, which is expressed through what Jesus Christ did, well, what's going to happen is I'm going to work something on the inside of you. I'm going to allow my power and my grace to work in you. And what's going to happen is that which is of me is going to start to now come out of you as love towards yes. others. Yes. And again, and in that case, again, you know, if you have love towards your brother and your sister, you're not going to mess with another man's wife. You're not going to sit there and mess uh -huh. with a sister, know she married. or not. You're not going to uh -huh. do that. It's God's love in you. You're not going to steal right. from folks. You're not going to uh, 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 murder folks because you're just so mad at them. You're not going to do uh, stuff like that again as his love is worked in you. Go ahead, sir. And get this, and even uh, because it's evident that the Lord is in you when you receive him through, through the Lord Christ Jesus, uh, this is an example uh -huh. because the thing he come to mind is a loan shark. Or not. Whereas before he came into Christ, mm -hmm. or what have you, he'll hunt you down. Oh, my. That's what he killed you for. My, my. The funds you have. Yep. Uh, 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 you might may owe him. Mm -hmm. But being in Christ, uh, 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 some uh, spirit Christ, my God, our individual, yeah, yeah. that forgiveness he can take, my God, God will give you of your death. Come on now, exactly and, right. And that's a, 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 a scripture in, in Mark or Matthew somewhere exactly. where Jesus said that. And he that's talked right. about that as well. And that is so true because, again, and this is why. I keep saying it's connected. When we believe in God's love yes. towards us, yes. it's the initial thing again. Mm -hmm. And then through that, that's us believing in Jesus Christ yes. and what he's provided and what he's made available. Well, what's going to happen when I trust in what Jesus Christ has done? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's going to, yes. again, shed abroad yes. in my yes. heart that love. He's yes. going to, again, yes. work in me to form everything that God has provided for me in his love. Well, now that that's in me, what well, it's got to go somewhere. That's it's right. going to be manifest out of me that's towards right. others. Exactly. In love towards others. And again, just like he said, oh, no one anything other oh, than to love. Go ahead. Oh, I you, but, but, yeah, but that is so true. Again, and, and that's why he's saying that that is again what will be the outcome mm -hmm. again in our lives and the beautiful again aspect of that love is that love does no harm to a neighbor yes. that's why love is the fulfillment of the law exactly. you don't need a law exactly. when you have God's love exactly. working to in you and towards others and again as that love again works on the inside of us look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 uh, um, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Uh, it says, for the love of Christ, this is Paul speaking. Look what he says it does. The love of Christ compels us mm -hmm. because we judge mm -hmm. us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves. Right. But for him who died for them right. and rose again. Well, that one who died for them and rose again was an expression of God's love yes. for us. And again, and if I believe in that expression of love for us, and he said, I'm going to have a different judgment. I'm going to have a different outlook. I'm going to, I'm going to have this perspective that says, if one died, if Jesus died, all are dead. Meaning if he sat there and had to go to the cross to pay the penalty for all of mankind's sins, he did that because mankind could do nothing That's of right. themselves. That's so why right. would I expect mankind to do something in and of themselves? No, through that, I'm going to recognize that all are dead and no one can do anything of themselves, including me. And I'm going to rely on God's love for me. I'm going to rely on his expression of, of love towards me and him sending his son Jesus Christ and as that happens again I'm going to have a different judgment and that same love that was towards me in Christ is going to be expressed out of me towards others mm -hmm. again as I live by faith in God's love towards me 
that love of Christ again that's going to be developed in me is going to compel me in that's how right. I interact with other individuals. Again, this isn't a oh, I got to try to love. I got to try. No, this is as I have again received his love for me which is expressed through Jesus Christ. That love mm -hmm. working on the inside of me is going to affect how I automatically respond to people. That's as I live by yes, faith right. in that love towards our uh, love of God that was towards me. And so again, this is what I wrote. I said, God's love towards us is manifest through his grace, power, right standing, forgiveness, peace, uh, life, knowledge, righteousness, and holiness that are all provided through Jesus Christ. All yeah. of that is an expression of God's That's love. The right. fact that he would, again, allow his power to work in my life. Again, he did that out of his love. His grace yes. to work in my life, he did that out of his love. For me to have right standing with him, he did that out of his love. For me to be forgiven by him, it's, he did that out of his love. Yes. For me right. to have peace with him. He did that out of his love. For me to have his life working in me, his love, his joy, his peace, his kindness, his forgiveness working in me. He did all of that out of his love. The fact that he would do all that in me. Righteousness. The fact that he would, uh, um, unholiness. The fact that he'll set me apart. And again, and cause me to think differently. Cause me to act differently. All of that was an expression of of God's love yes. that is found and provided in Jesus Christ. And so when I trust in Jesus Christ, all of this is what it will work in my heart and life. That's I'll be right. set apart again. I see righteousness manifest. I have right standing. Yeah. I see his power. I see his grace. I see his knowledge, his, his way of thinking, his way of seeing start to form in me. And all of that is God's love towards me that all of that is God saying I love you so much yes. that I provided yes. for you all of this when you were instead of had knowledge you were ignorant mm -hmm. instead of again having having my power you working in your own weak yes. insufficient power instead of again you having again righteousness and holiness you had commonness and, and unrighteousness that you That's operated right. in and so my love was to take you from over there to bring you over here and I'm asking you to trust in yes. my love for you. And yes. you'll see all of these things manifest in your life. And then I said, all of these things and much more are an expression of God's love towards us that we receive and walk in when we live by faith in Jesus. And all of these things that God has expressed toward us in his love begin to work in us uh, as they begin to work in us they are there to be used to love others in the way that God has loved us that's the reason why again he wants us to walk in forgiveness to, in relation to him it's so that now as I operate in this forgiveness in relation to him I'll operate in forgiveness in relation to others, which That's it'll right. be an expression of love That's to them. Right. As again, I have his knowledge working in me, his way of seeing again, working in me, it'll affect how I begin to see others and cause me to operate in the way God wants me to operate with them in, in, in expressing love towards them. God's power and his grace, again, that working in me is for the purpose of now me operating in love yes. towards my brothers and my sisters. All of these things, God setting me apart and renewing and changing how I think, how I live, is so that now how I live, how I think, can be an expression of love towards others. And all of that, again, is found when I believe yes. in God's expression of yes. love for me. When yes. I simply trust in God's love for me that he expressed through Jesus Christ, that him mm -hmm. sending his son Jesus Christ to die for my sins again, and not just that, but to be buried and now to be raised from the dead, to be the source of everything that I need. And as I trust in him, ask that those things are going to work in me and be and work out of me 
mm-hmm. towards others, in mm-hmm. love towards others. You got anything for me? We get out here. This, this is uh, real good stuff for our faith because unless we know we deal with a God who created everything, the universe and everything. So yes. therefore, um, He given of Himself through the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. that all we have to do is accept Him oh, and let Him do it. Oh, come on, now that's it. And what? And because once he do that and take care oh my and dwell us then we know that my goodness yes. according to his life we will walk my and goodness God don't die. my god come on now that's Amen. exactly right he know how to quicken the body oh my yes he does should yes. that be his will that yes a one in him to do yes uh, yes he had he had ways of raising us up yes, yes. Us through his son oh yes he does <laughs> yes he so does it, it is essential that we have that faith in it. Oh my, exactly. And, and it again, it is so connected to, again, that faith being that in God's love yes. towards us. That that was an expression of God's love towards us in him providing everything. And he wants, it says somewhere, I didn't put the scripture up here, that we we believe in the love that it's in First John. We believe in the love that God has towards us. And as we believe in that love that God has towards us, it's going to be a conduit for what God has provided to now work in us. Just like you said, him to dwell on the inside of us by his power, by his grace, by his love, by his life, by who he is. And as that dwells in us, it's going to manifest out of us towards others. Lord, we just bless you. Mm -hmm. We honor you. We praise you, God. We thank you for today. We thank you for just another opportunity for you to speak to our hearts and show us your love for us, how much you love us, that you have sent your son to die for our sins, to pay the penalty for our sins, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins, to provide righteous, right standing with you again, despite our wrong that we have done. And that you didn't stop there, but you Put him in the grave and allow all of our sins that were placed on him to be uh, taken to the grave as well. But you didn't leave him there. You Mm -hmm. raised him from the dead to leave those sins in the grave and to be raised up as our righteousness, as the source of our life, as the source of power, as the source of grace, as the source of peace, as the source of holiness, as the source of righteousness, as the source of everything that you are wanting to have worked in our lives. And as that works in our lives through faith in Jesus Christ, it will be expressed out of us towards love, uh, towards others. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your wonderful plan and your wonderful uh, provision that you have made to make all of this happen. The the wisdom, oh God, that you have in doing the things and doing it the way that you have done it. We are ever thankful for. No man can just make that up and come up with that in their own mind. You have got, you had to reveal that to us. And we thank you for that. We thank you for showing us that. And we are thankful for you doing that in our lives. We honor you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. And we thank you. You the turn. Tomorrow's not promised.